Let's now see how to apply these neural calculations, if you will, to solving a problem, for example. All right. We're going to try to solve a really simple problem with what we call a single layer network, just one set of neurons, really just a linear model, um, nothing more complicated. Now let me remind you what XOR is. I'm going to have two inputs, X1 and X2, and a single output Y. So think about this as my input is X1, X2, and my label is Y. And the label Y should be zero when both inputs are equal. So either zero, zero, or one, one, and it should be one otherwise. Yeah. So you can think about this in, in terms of this, this, this picture here. I've got, so if this is X1 here, and this is X2 here, then zero, zero has label uh, zero, and one, one has label zero, and then one, zero, and zero, one have label one each. Right? So that's the space we occupy. Well, what do we know about these linear models? Without any nonlinearity is that all they can do is draw a line in this space. That's what they're capable of doing. So let's try to draw a line in the space that does what? That separates the zeros from the ones. That's what a classifier should do. Well, there's a line. Well, that doesn't quite cut it because we dropped one of the ones here. Um, here's another line. Well, that doesn't do it either. And no matter where you draw this line, you cannot solve this problem using linear models. And that's a little surprising, by the way, because that seems like it should be a pretty easy uh, problem to solve. When the two values are the same, output zero. When they're different, output one. And yet linear models, whether that's least squares, logistic regression, linear SVMs, or a neuron, simply can't solve the problem. Now, that's also a little surprising because surely we have used things like neural nets to solve significantly more complex problems than XOR, after all. And the magic here, again, and I've hinted at this before, is that nonlinearity, that F. Um, and that was also the magic in support vector machines. It was just sort of hidden from us. Why does that nonlinearity uh, allow us to find curvy surfaces? Well, one of the intuitions was, for example, Remember that rect rect rectangular to polar transform? It took something that was not se linearly separable and made it linearly separable. And effectively, that's what these nonlinearities do. They take these nonlinear problems and linearize them. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to see how to wire up some neurons to try to solve that problem.